welcome to Your Sexual Health. I'm your host, Dr. Sadie Shafe. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, psychotherapist, and a board-certified clinical sexologist. I have over 20 years of experience treating thousands of individuals in the United States and Europe. They're from different socioeconomic backgrounds, races, ages, religions, and cultures. My experience includes treating individuals with psychiatric problems, substance abuse issues, domestic violence, interpersonal relationship issues, marital and family concerns, childhood and adult trauma, military sexual trauma, sexuality and sexual intimacy concerns, and problems. Today on Your Sexual Health, we will be talking about erectile dysfunction, sometimes called impotence. This is the repeated inability to get or keep an erection firm enough for sexual intercourse. The word impotence may also be used to describe other problems that interfere with sexual intercourse and reproduction, such as the lack of sexual desire, problems with ejaculation or orgasm. Using the term erectile dysfunction makes it very clear that those other problems are not involved. Erectile dysfunction, or ED, can be a total inability to achieve an erection, an inconsistent ability to do so, or a tendency to sustain only brief erections. These variations make defining ED and estimating its incidence difficult. It is estimated that between 15 to 30 million men suffer from this condition. According to the National Ambulatory Medical Care Survey, for every 1,000 men in the United States, 7.7 physician office visits were made for ED in 1985. By 1999, the rate had nearly tripled to 22.3%. The increase happened gradually, presumably, as treatments such as vacuum devices and injectable drugs became more widely available, and discussing erectile dysfunction became acceptable. The most publicized advancement was the introduction of the oral drug Viagra in 1998. In older men, ED usually has a physical cause such as disease, injury, or side effects of drugs. Any disorder that causes injury to the nerve or impairs blood flow in the penis has the potential to cause ED. Incidences increases with age. ED, though, is treatable at any age, and awareness of this fact has been growing. More men have been seeking help and returning to normal sexual activity because of improved successful treatments of ED. Which brings to mind a couple of clients that I've had that suffer from this condition. I've had one client come in talking about how embarrassing it was to allow his wife to believe that he was having sexual affairs rather than sit down and talk to her about what he was experiencing. And then at the same time, he had a difficult time talking about it with his doctor. In the process of having our session, we talked about the importance of him being able to express what was going on with him physically. At first, it was very frightening for him because he really didn't know what was happening. We then further had a discussion, and he talked about having diabetes and high blood pressure, which are some diseases that absolutely can lead to ED, especially based on some of the medications that are taking. Now, let's take a look at what causes ED. Since an erection requires a precise sequence of events, ED can occur when any of the events are disrupted. Damage to nerves, arteries, smooth muscle and fibrous tissues, often as a result of disease, is the most common cause of ED. Diseases such as diabetes, kidney disease, chronic alcoholism and multiple sclerosis, vascular disease and neurologic disease account for about 70% of ED cases. Between 35 and 50 percent of men with diabetes will experience ED. Experts believe that psychological factors such as stress, anxiety, guilt, depression, low self-esteem, and fear of sexual failure cause 10 to 20 percent of ED cases, which reminds me of a case I had when the client suffered from anxiety related to sexual performance and was absolutely convinced that he was unable to satisfy his mate. During the course of the sessions that we had, he was able to work on this issue with anxiety and then began to see improvement in his ability to perform, which, of course, made for a much happier mate. Men with a physical cause for ED frequently experience the same sort of psychological reactions as do a person with psychological factors. 
meaning stress, anxiety, guilt, and depression. Now let's take a look at how ED is diagnosed. ED is diagnosed from a patient's history, that is the medical and sexual histories that help define the degree and the nature of ED. Using certain prescriptions or illegal drugs can suggest a chemical cause, since drug effects account for about 25% of ED cases. Also, looking at physical examinations can give clues to systematic problems. Laboratory tests. There are several laboratory tests that can diagnose ED. Other tests include monitoring erections that occur during sleep. And they can help rule out certain psychological causes of ED. Healthy men have involuntary erections during their sleep. And if a nocturnal erection does not occur, then ED is likely to have a physical rather than a psychological cause. Psychosocial examination using interviews and a questionnaire can also reveal psychosocial factors. A man's sexual partner can also be interviewed to help determine you know, fear around expectation and perceptions during sexual intercourse, problems that they both may be experiencing. Now let's take a look at how ED is treated. Most physicians suggest that treatment proceed from the least to the most invasive. Cutting back on any drugs with harm for side effects is to be considered first. Psychotherapy and behavior modifications in selected patients can be considered next. When you look at psychotherapy, experts often treat psychologically based ED using techniques that decrease anxiety associated with intercourse. The thing that I talked about earlier where I worked with the patient in the session and we talked about things that he needed to do to relax, which definitely helped him improve his ability to perform. The patient's partner can help with this technique, which include gradual development of intimacy and stimulation. Drugs for treating ED can be taken orally or injected directly into the penis as well as inserted into the tip of the penis. The Food and Drug Administration approved Viagra, which was the first pill to treat ED. And it's usually taken an hour before sexual activity. Now, while Viagra improves the response to sexual stimulation, it does not trigger automatic erection. And that's an important fact to remember. Furthermore... Let's take a look at something I think that is really important, and that's to look at research that gives us hope for dealing with uh, ED. Advances with suppositories, injectable medications, and implants have helped to expand the options for men seeking treatment for ED. These advances have also helped increase the number of men that are seeking treatment itself. The National Institute for Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Disease sponsors programs aimed at understanding the cause of erectile dysfunction and finding treatment to reverse its effects. The Division of Kidney, Urologic, and Hematologic Diseases supported the researchers who developed Viagra and continue to support basic research into the mechanisms of erection and the diseases that impair normal functioning. Lastly, there are points to remember when it comes to ED. Erectile dysfunction, ED, is a repeated inability to get or keep an erection firm enough for sexual intercourse. ED affects 15 to 30 million American men. ED usually has a physical cause and is treatable at all ages. Treatments include psychotherapy, drug therapy, vacuum devices, and surgery. Some of this research has been provided by thefreelibrary.com. I encourage you to continue to listen to your sexual health so you can improve your sexual literacy and become a sexually healthy adult. In closing, if you suffer from any sexual problems or have a concern, it is always wise to first consult a medical doctor for any physical ailments. And for those of you seeking therapy for sexual issues, seek a licensed sex therapist. If you desire the privacy of telephone counseling rather than an in-office, in-person visit, there is a link on this website to mine, drsadieshave.com. I offer convenient, confidential, and affordable telephone therapy. I'd like to thank my production crew, Data Log Technologies. You've been listening to Your Sexual Health with Dr. Sadie Shafe. 
I invite you to listen in daily as we discuss issues about human sexuality. These issues and concerns impact you, people you know, and the world around you. More than 60 years ago in 1948, in Alfred Kinsey's book, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, Alan Gregg in the preface writes, Certainly there is no aspect of human biology in our current civilization that stands in more need of scientific knowledge and courageous humility than that of sex. The history of medicine proves that in so far as man seeks to know himself and face his whole nature, he has become free from bewildered fear, despondent shame, or hypocrisy. As long as sex is dealt with in the current confusion of ignorance and sophistication, denial and indulgence, suppression and stimulation, punishment and exploitation, secrecy and display, it will be associated with duplicity and indecency that leads neither to intellectual honesty nor human dignity. This is a timeless truth that still remains a frontier for science. The goal of my show, Your Sexual Health, is to increase the numbers of sexually healthy adults by increasing your sexual literacy and to deal with concerns and problems related to sexuality that require interventions due to their impact on your wellness and your quality of life. You can email me at sadie at drshafe.com or visit my website at drsadieshafe.com. Thank you. You've been listening to Your Sexual Health. I am Dr. Sadie Shafe.